Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. So uh, be sure to check out the links in the video description about that and the puzzle books and C++ best practices books that I've been working on as well as upcoming events that you might be interested in. Now in this episode, I'm going to do something that's probably pretty ill-advised here. Uh, that is, I'm going to, with very little preparation at all, try to show what an implementation of standard function might look like in C++ 20. Now I'm just going to go ahead and caveat this by saying this is not going to be a fully standards conformant version. It's just theoretically going to be a version of standard function that can work. And this is directly related to the episode that I did on how standard function is not a lambda, is not a function pointer. Okay, so the basic interface to standard function is that it needs to take a function signature of some sort. So let's go ahead and declare a template for our function. Uh, we're gonna forward declare this, but not give an implementation because we need a partial specialization of it. And so this is just two function templates at the moment. They don't do anything, but we haven't gotten a compile error either. So let's go ahead and start to create some tests to make sure that these are doing what we want them to do. So I am going to declare a function that takes an int, a couple of ints, returns an int, like this. Now this should compile. Yeah, there we go, unused variable func. And we're expecting that if I did something like this that isn't a function signature, that I'm going to get a compile error because, let's see, implicit instantiation of undefined template. Okay, so that's good. So it's an undefined template. That is actually exactly what we wanted to see in this case. So this is function signature syntax. We have our partial specialization here. Now this thing is going to have an operator paren overload that's going to take all the parameters that it needs to take. Now we can exactly match the parameters that we're expecting, or we could take a templated set of parameters. Let's just go ahead and do an exact match here. And so we're going to have a call operator overload. It's going to return ret, and it is going to take, well, this set of parameters. Whatever was passed to us, that's what it's going to take. So if we try to call this right now with one and two, then we, let's see, oh, that's private. Let's go ahead and make these things public. Uh, so yeah, it knows to call this thing. Now it's not actually able to do anything with it. And now I still have the set on risk five, but we kind of want to be able to execute this code. Um, so let's just go ahead and set this on x86-64, some sort of, uh, sure, clang trunk, why not? Okay, all right, so I need to implement this thing and it's gonna need to call whatever kind of function it was created with. So let's go ahead and add another test. We want this thing to be, uh, let's create a function pointer and we want to construct this or assign it to one of these things. So let's go ahead and construct it with that. And we're going to get a compile failure. Yeah, here we go. Excess elements instruct initializer. So what we need to do is go ahead and create a constructor. Let's go ahead and start with a constructor that takes a pointer to a function that happens to take all of the exact parameters that we're expecting. So now this is going to compile, but we can't actually execute this code because we're going to get a couple of undefined things here. But we are now need a place to store this function. And 
what is this? What is going to be live here? Now it needs to be something that is an abstract idea. It needs to be an abstract interface, a pointer to an abstract interface because we need to be able to hold functions of any size. Yes, there can be big functions and small function objects that might be passed in here. And we need to be able to do this type erasure. So this episode is also kind of an introduction to compile time and runtime type erasure. So let's go ahead and declare in here a new struct that is going to be something like our function interface. Now this thing needs a virtual function that returns the expected type. I'm just going to go ahead and call it call. We don't need to have operator parens as far as the eye can see here. And it's going to take the set of expected parameters, and this is going to be pure virtual. That should work. Now we're going to need a pointer to an object of this type. This is going to be our actual function. And eh, we'll call it t callable. Let's call it callable here too. Sure. All right, let's not get too creative with the names. All right, so now in here I can return the callable. And I'm going to unpack this set of parameters. Right, warning delete called on a callable interface that does not have a virtual destructor. That is very important to avoid undefined behavior. And now we have rule of five violations, and we're going to have to deal with those in a few moments here. Now yeah, we'll deal with them at some point, probably. Okay, so this callable thing can be called. Now we need to deal with the constructor. So the constructor needs to be able to create some concrete type of this callable interface, but it doesn't know what it needs to hold yet. So this is actually going to be a template that takes some templated callable type and it is going to derive from the callable interface. So this thing now gives us something to construct, although if I try to construct it at the moment, I'm going to get an error because I have a pure virtual type. Uh, it doesn't have the virtual function call implemented that it needs, but let's just go ahead and demonstrate what that would look like. So now I need to initialize my callable with make unique of callable impl, which is of the type of f, which is a function pointer in this case. So that's not very complicated. I can just go ahead and declare it like this, or I could have used decal type, but I'm going to do it this way. So I want to call make unique of a callable impl of something that is a function pointer. And I'm going to pass that. Oh, I'm in C++ 11 mode still. Let's go ahead and ramp this up to C++ 20 mode. All right, unimplemented pure virtual method call. That's funny because technically this should say pure virtual member function. See this, these say member functions method doesn't technically exist in C++ if we want to be pedantic. All right, so now I need to implement this virtual function and I need to give this thing some way to hold the callable object. So this is going to be an object of type callable. It's going to be called callable, sure. Now I have two things called callable. That's a little annoying. And I need to implement this call function. So that's a callable thing, and I'm calling it. Let's see. Because I'm using make unique, I actually need a 
constructor. All right, there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and format this. All right, so this is at its most simple form how standard function needs to be implemented. We've got something that takes a templated function signature. We need to have a constructor that can do interesting things and we need to implement all of these operators. Now, if you are going to do this more correctly, you need to, let's see, we need to finish our rule of five here. And then this is going to become important because we now need a copy constructor, which means this is going to need a virtual clone function so that we know how to copy the thing that is now hidden from us. That's not terribly difficult, but the thing that's passed in has to be copyable. And then we need to add a plethora. Do we need to add a plethora of other constructors? Mm, probably, possibly. We could do it with one generic constructor. We could also use um, to simplify some of these things, we probably want to use standard invoke down here. And I've done a previous episodes on that. So that shouldn't be very complicated. Uh, but this works with function pointers at the moment. Let's just go ahead and do one. All right, so we added a generic overload here, which makes me begin to question exactly how we would want to do this. Uh, I should be able to now construct this thing with a lambda. All right, uh, that continued to work, which means we probably no longer need this interface. All right, slightly more generic. And at the moment, we don't need invoke uh, because we don't have any way of taking a member function pointer. But if we were to take a member function pointer, actually, I think that this would be better. We call standard invoke, pass it the callable and the set of parameters, get rid of this comment, and then we need to include the functional header. Okay, I definitely have gone further than I intended to with this, but this is, um, well, this is a simple implementation of standard function, but I hope it gives you a little bit of an idea as to the complexity that is required here to fully implement something like this. And uh, why it's a, a lot more overhead than something like a function pointer or a lambda if you have code that's generic and you can just pass around uh, templated lambda callable things that's going to be a lot less overhead than something like this where we're really really relying on the compiler to be able to do heap elision and all kinds of inlining and optimization but we can see that, yeah, it still continues to work even with a capture full Lambda. So yeah, that's a pretty small version of this. Let's go ahead and remove this comment too, because we no longer need a plethora of constructors. This will take any function object. And then we would need to, yeah, so we need to worry about Boarding and unwrapping of reference wrapper and that kind of thing as well here. All right, yeah, definitely going to stop here. 21 minutes in, probably some of this will get edited out. But um, yeah, thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Uh, I think that went way better than I expected it to. Um, be sure to subscribe and, you know, check out my books and such.